Hi, my name is Chantal Mayer Crittenden, and I will be giving a talk on the importance of assessing cognitive skills in bilingual children with a primary language impairment. This presentation was prepared by myself and my colleague Manon Rabial, both speech language pathologists and assistant professors at Laurentian University in Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. Many bilingual school-aged children are misdiagnosed as having a primary language impairment when in reality they are in the process of learning a second language. The reverse is also true. How then can we differentiate between these two groups? How do we overcome the bilingual assessment challenge? Recent research has shown that children with PLI often have subtle weaknesses in their non-linguistic cognitive processing skills. This presentation will look at how we can assess these skills and establish intervention goals accordingly by looking at a review of the existing literature. Articles that have studied non-linguistic processing skills in children with and without PLI have been examined, and only a select few will be presented today. Deficits in processing speed, sustained attention, selective attention, and working memory are often present in children with PLI. A plethora of tools exist to assess these abilities, which is why an assessment protocol, protocol is proposed. Many studies have analyzed the relationship between cognitive skills and language skills. Indeed, children who have primary language impairment also have reduced performance on cognitive tasks as mentioned before. The presence of subclinical weaknesses of processing speed, working memory, and attention in children with PLI could contribute to language deficits by impeding language learning. A meta-analysis of sustained attention in children with PLI by Ebert and Koner in 2011 revealed the existence of sustained attention shortfalls which was demonstrated by reduced accuracy. The studies included in Ebert and Conert's analysis included monolingual English-speaking participants. However, recent studies have shown that bilingual children have better performances on perceptual cognitive tasks than monolingual children. The impact of bilingualism on the attention levels of children with PLI remains not well understood. Therefore, the purpose of this talk is to look at the various tools that exist for the assessment of these skills. Let's look at the different cognitive factors. Sustained attention can be defined as the capacity to maintain attention and alertness over a prolonged period of time. It is the ability to become and to remain engaged during an activity. Sustained attention represents a fundamental factor in human cognitive capacity and is needed to accomplish all cognitive activity. Categorization, or the ability to classify, develops around 18 months. Although very young children tend to reply on the perceptual similarities of objects for categorization, children as young as four years old have been found to override perceptual information when it is conflicting with its taxonomical category. Cognitive flexibility Oops, I lost my talk. Sorry, cognitive flexibility can be defined as the capacity to move from one idea or strategy to another with a certain facility. It comes into play during problem resolution when there is a certain degree of indetermination. It is not needed for tasks that are familiar and predictable, such as greetings. However, it is needed for unexpected and unfamiliar tasks, such as preparing a novel response. Fluid reasoning is the capacity to think logically and solve problems in novel situations, and it emerges early in the first two to three years of life. Its development is relatively independent of education and culture. According to some authors, fluid reasoning serves as a scaffold in helping children acquire other abil abilities. Working memory is a limited system responsible for the temporary classification and treatment of information. According to Badley's model, it is comprised of four components. The central executive, the visual spatial sketch pads, the phonological loop, and the episodic buffer. Of importance to this study are the visual sk spatial sketch pad, specializing in the maintenance of and handling of visual and spatial representation, working memory, as well as the phonological loop, which provides a temporary storage of verbal information and plays an important role in sub-vocal rehearsal. Specific language impairments or primary language impairments are high incidence developmental disorders assumed to be due to innate factors 
interrelating with language learning. PLI includes the subtle non-linguistic processing weaknesses that exist together with the more obvious language delays without any frank sensory, motor, or neurological impairments. Until recently, the presence of language impairments assumed that cognitive skills were intact, focusing the evaluation on linguistic competencies. Nowadays, many researchers show that certain non-linguistic abilities among children with language impairment are breached, as mentioned before. These non-linguistic abilities include working memory, phonological working memory, executive functions, discrimination of nonverbal components, procedural memory and abstraction, speed of information processing, auditory processing, among others. The diagnostic criteria of language disorders varies according to cultural and linguistic context and according to the assessment tools that are used. In several studies conducted among children with PLI, it is noted that the diagnosis is based on what is not present with the child, so it's exclusive, as well as what is present, also inclusive. According to Tomlin and collaborators, approximately 7% of monolingual school-age children are affected by a specific language impairment every year. A systematic search for empirical, empirical articles addressing non-linguistic cognitive processing skills in children with PLI was conducted. Database that were searched included ERIC, Medline, PsychInfo, CINAHL, and dissertations and theses from ProQuest. The search term combinations included language impair and non-linguistic cognitive process and language disorder and non-linguistic cognitive were applied to the, the titles, keywords, and abstracts in each database. The study analysis revealed 24 studies that included our search words. However, only a select few were retained. In the next slides, we will take a look at some of the studies and their findings according to the cognitive tests that were used. Studies that used the Weschler Test for Intelligence for Children showed that 60 children in a certain study by Das and Eisto with PLI can be divided into two subtypes, high in the successive processing factor and in the simultaneous processing factor scores, and low in the successive processing factor and in the simultaneous processing factor scores. This study showed that low simultaneous and low successive group was significantly lower in WISC verbal IQ and the Weschler memory scale for logical memory. Studies that looked at measures of visual spatial processing and executive function, notably Clara, conducted two studies, studies with children with SLI, as well as typically developing peers. Children's performance was measured with three visual spatial processing tasks, space visu visualization, position in space, and design copying, as well as the Wisconsin card sorting test. This study showed that executive functions have a great impact on SLI children's working memory performance regardless of domain. Also, tasks that require an increased amount of attention control and executive functions were more difficult for the children with SLI or PLI than for their peers. Most children with SLI scored either below average or in the low average range on the neuropsychological tests that measured executive functions. Miller, Leonard, Kale, Yang, Tomlin, and Francis set out to determine whether children with SLLI were slower than typically developing peers at age 14. They looked at 14-year-old children with SLI, non-specific language impairment, and typical development. The, these 14-year-old children were given several linguistic and non-linguistic speeded tasks such as the tapping task, a simple response time task, a visual search task, and a mental rotation task. The children had received the same task at age 9. Response time performance was examined. Both the SLI and the NLI groups were significantly slower than the typically developing group in motor, nonverbal cognitive, and language task domains. The results suggest that slow response time is a persistent characteristic of many children with language impairment. Conert and Windsor's study focused on within and across task performance on four basic non-linguistic processing tasks. The aim was to systematically investigate areas of overall potential and divergence among three groups of linguistically diverse children. 
They looked at English-only speakers with LI, typically developing English-only speakers, typically developing Spanish-English speakers, in 100 children. The results showed that the English-only group was significantly faster than the language impairment group in three of the four tasks. The English-only group was faster than the bilingual group in the choice visual detection task. So some of these studies clearly show that children with language impairments have subtle weaknesses in many different cognitive areas. Now let's take a look at the different cognitive tools that have been used. The tools have been grouped according to the age range, the language in which they are available, and the qualifications required for administration. This will facilitate the assessment of bilingual children by providing teachers, speech language pathologists, psychologists, and other professionals an assessment protocol founded on evidence-based practice. So here we look at some of the tools. We have the Kaufman assessment for children, which will assess children age 3 to 18 years, um, and it can be um, administered by a speech language pathologist. And we, here we have all of the skills that are assessed, so visual processing, short-term memory, reasoning, long-term storage, okay, among others. We also have the Weschler Preschool and Primary Scale of Intelligence, which is for two years and a half to three, eleven, and four, seven to seven years. Here we're looking at block design, um, object assembly, um, matrix reasoning, among others. Available languages are French, English, Dutch, Finnish, Italian, among other languages. The Weschler Intelligence Scale for Children, which is for the older children, um, again, we're looking at word reasoning, matrix reasoning, picture concepts, letter, number sequencing, perseveration, and abstract thinking, executive function, and are available in French, English, and Spanish. Even though those are non-verbal cognitive tools, a lot of the instructions and the examiner manuals are in a given language. For some of these tests, we can they can be administered um, without... Um, necessarily having to be within those languages. If we look at the AMA, the Automated Working Memory Assessment, here we're assessing the memory skills, uh, a bit of liter literacy in reading and writing, a bit of mathematics, and it is available in many different languages. We also have Alloway Working Memory Assessment, which is the AMA 2, and again it's looking at the same abilities. We also have the Tower of London test, which is higher order problem solving ability. Um, it, it looks at attention disorders and executive functioning difficulties. We also have the test of everyday attention for children, which uh, looks at the ability to selectively attend and sustained attention, divide attention, switch attention, uh, and withhold verbal and motor responses. We also have Raven's Colored Progressive Mattresses, which looks at clear thinking ability and assesses the degree to which a person can think clearly um, and you know, looks at nonverbal abilities in three different levels. Uh, we have not mentioned here the Lighter International Performance Scale, which will look at fluid reasoning, which will look at um, um, the ability to have the flexible cognitive ability. Um, and there are many other tests that we have not included here for the sake of brevity, but that will be included in the uh, article that would be submitted uh, following the, this conference. So to conclude, um, it is very important to look at non-linguistic cognitive assessment tools when assessing um, children with suspected language impairments. Um, there are many tools, as we have demonstrated, that can be used for, by SLPs for this purpose. Um, however, further studies are required to determine the specificity and sensitivity for the diagnosis of a language impairment of some of these tools. Okay, thank you very much to Laurentian University. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact the um, um, email listed on this final slide.